Welcome to our channel. This is Yvonne from Ginger Chick Rehab and along with my husband Chris, we do thrift flips. We take unwanted, unloved, outdated thrift store finds and then we give them new life. And on our channel, we share the process with you all. So we were contacted by a Ginger Chick fan here locally who has always been shopping at our retail booth. I believe that she shopped even before we had a retail booth and so very graciously offered us this corner hutch and we were very happy to come across this because I feel as if corner hutches are a rare find in our area. My wife was asked to review the Bagat air purifier. This one is rated for 270 square feet, so it pretty much covers the living room and our kitchen and our house. Um, we have noticed over the last two weeks that this thing has been running, that uh, we have less dust when we're dusting at the end of the week on our countertops. So now I'm going to turn it on and show you how it works. Very simple controls on the top, power. There's multiple speeds on the fan. One, two, three. You can set it up for a timer so it automatically shuts off after so long. This will actually indicate when the filter has 2,000 hours of runtime on it, and then you can order a new one. Let's open it up and see how it looks after two weeks. So after two weeks, this purifier has caught a lot of cat hair down at the bottom. But other than that, it still looks relatively clean. And we have had this thing running constantly for 24 hours a day. <clears throat> so on the filter itself, it's just got for large particles here. The center section is actually for HEPA, and the back is actually, and you can hear it, is a charcoal filter. Now I've got to clean up cat hair. So in all, the review on this, uh, I guess the thing I would say is we never really thought we needed an air purifier. We thought our house was very clean and everything. Um, you don't really notice how much dust you do have in your house until you run one of these for a while. Uh, it has helped out, like I said, with the dust cutting it down and uh, the air. Uh, I don't smell a difference, but I'm guessing it's better for my health. Thank you. So the doily that was stapled on was free with purchase. So Chris is just removing this cute little older doily. Though she offered us to take this for free, me and Chris are just one of those types. We at least try to offer somebody $20 for an item because I feel like that's what we would buy it for at Goodwill. I just feel fair, more fair when I'm reselling an item for profit to offer somebody a little money for an item. Though you can definitely tell back in its day, it probably had some doors on this. But open shelving is just as nice as having some place to hide. And we know what we do when we have doors. We just stash it full of stuff that we forget about. So it's okay to take the hinges that are left behind the little stoppers that held the doors to begin with. We're just going to be leaving this open shelving. So I'm sorry about some of the fuzziness of the video. Sometimes when you're in the workshop, you don't realize that you get sawdust on your video camera. So some of this video is a little bit on the fuzzy side. I am sorry for that. And of course, you don't know until you go to edit it that it was fuzzy that you needed to clean off your camera. So he's just using some of the Durham water putty to fill in this area where he had taken off the closing system for what was the cabinet doors. And then after that dried, he's just going in the, with the orbital sander and sanding that nice and smooth. The longer you let that Durham water putty sit, the harder it is to sand. So as soon as it's dry, it's probably the best time to sand it because it does dry rock hard. If you, Especially, we have learned not to let it sit overnight, that's for sure. So all the shelves for this corner hutch were pretty much even with the outer edge of the hutch so chris was going to ask add a piece of trim just to beef up and pull out that last shelf where the doors were that they used to close that's why it's recessed back just to make it look a little bit more even with that top shelf above it Thank you. 
And now he's going back through and sanding any of the other areas that he filled in any holes from the hinges marks or any other nail holes for whatever reason they had nail holes with that Durham water putty. This was a you know, thrifted piece, so you never know why there's a hole or what was there before or what they used this item for. So now that he's fixed all the pieces and parts and filled in all the holes, now he's going back in and getting all the grime and dirt and just whatever may be on that that would prevent paint from sticking. He's just using some crud cutter. We like an item, a product that we use in the workshop. We do not have running water in our workshop. So crud cutter is an item that you just spray on, you wipe off, you do not have to rinse. So the first part of Chris painting on this piece is he's going in with this ready to use black onyx in the flat and he's just going in and painting the corners, painting the, those edges. We're going to be distressing this piece at the end and there's no need to paint the entire piece black, just where you know that you're going to be distressing it to show some of that black through. This is just a look that we achieve that we like to achieve. So this is a process that he learned with the furniture pieces that he doesn't need to waste all that black paint if he's just going to be distressing the corners. So now he's going in, he realized that the red was not going to be so easy to cover up the black. It might still seep through if he painted the inside of that black. And you know that white and red is just going to make pink. And then the bottom where the cabinet doors were, it's a different type of material. So he's going to have to go in and do primer. He's going to have to do a couple coats of this Binzer Gray Primer to make sure that when he goes to paint the white, that the white is as crisp as it could be. So we're going to be really keeping this piece neutral by painting it. Why, I'm sure you already knew that. If you are a Ginger Chick fan, you knew the, the, that the edges were going to be painted black. And then he was going to go in with the Kills Paint and Primer in the flat white. And white is just one of those cover colors that it could take two coats to cover. It could take four coats to cover. He always chooses to do thin coats. So when it comes to the sanding and the distressing that you don't have to sand off any drips or runs or any pooled up places. So he's having a little bit of a bleed through problem on this hutch. Bleed through is where when you're painting white or a lighter color, the paint is starting to yellow, mixing in with whatever was put on the original product to begin with. So the fix is a couple coats of a shellac spray. Yes, if you pre-knew this or if you wanted to buy the, the primer that has the shellac in it and do the entire piece, that way you could do that. But as a flipper, we just kind of wait to see what happens with the piece if we just need to go in. The spray goes a long way and it dries really fast. So just trying to keep costs down in our area, we can't get a ton of money for the items that we flip. So we definitely try to make that cost efficient. So now Chris is going in with 300 grit sandpaper on the orbital sander and this rigid sander has a speed setting so he's going on the lowest setting that, I ha that he can and so what this is doing is just smoothing out any brush strokes that you may feel. Mm -hmm. 
Then he's coming back in with a 220 sandpaper on any of those sharp edges where those two corners meet. And so he's going to be pressing hard enough that some of that black shows through. And if you want some of that natural, which you don't because the inside of the those were painted red, but if that's the look you're going for, the harder you press, the more you'll get down to that natural color and that natural wood. But for us, we just like to go lightly over multiple passes just to show that black that they took the time to paint those corners black. So now he's just going to be blowing that off with the air compressor, getting all that sand dusting, that sanding dust off. Well, the shop's all dusty anyway, so why not add a little bit more sand dust to it? So he's going to be adding a little bit more extra layer of protection to this piece since it's open shelving and it may be in a kitchen area just to protect it. He's going to go in with some polycrylic and put a nice generous coat of polycrylic acrylic on each one of these shelves. And then you'll just be giving it a little light of the scuff sanding mitt just to open up that polycrylic, take that little bit of a shiny off. I don't know why the mat is shiny, even though it's supposed to be matte, but you want to open it up before his next step. Then you'll just take a dry cloth to remove any of the sand dusting left behind from sanding that little bit of the polycrylic. And then the last layer of protection is finishing the entire piece off with the Varathane finishing wax in the clear. He's just using a waxing brush to brush it on. And then as soon as he brushes it on, then he can just wipe it off. It just absorbs right in, just leaves a nice smooth finish seals and protects that white paint and i have to tell you the smell is wonderful so as a rare find in our area at corner hutches we ended up giving her 20 dollars for this hutch and because we feel as if it is a rare find we'll ask 125 for it in our booth and i think it is well worth every penny of that So I thank you so much for watching today's video and what did you think of this furniture flip? Was it something you would have stayed away or did we inspire you or help you out in any way? If we help, if you walk away with one little tip that we shared with you that has worked for us, then this video was well worth being made. So I thank you again so much for watching today's video and if you're part of our YouTube family, thank you so much. Just your kind comments and your tips that you share with us. We share our tips, you share your tips, just makes this YouTube channel work. And if you're new to our channel and checking us out for the first time, please consider hitting that subscription button along with the notification bell so you know when we've uploaded a new video. Thanks again for watching. So yeah, since you all have been asking, I thought I would add some photos of our two booths to the end of this video.